Welcome to PGCast, a production of HashRocket. My name is Josh Branchad. In this episode, I'm going to walk through the three different kinds of timestamp functions that Postgres provides. When it comes to time, Postgres can do quite a bit. Even if you just want to know what time it is right now, there are a few different functions to consider. The one we are probably the most familiar with is now. Let's see what that looks like. This gives us the current time. The now function works the same as the transaction timestamp function. We will continue to use transaction timestamp throughout this episode, but remember that it is interchangeable with now. The other two timestamp functions we're going to look at are statement timestamp and clock timestamp. Let's take a quick look at those. These all seem to be doing more or less the same thing, so what's the difference? The names might give us an idea of what each really does. Let's start a transaction and take a closer look. So we'll start by looking at transaction timestamp. Now we can wait a few seconds and then try that statement again. Now even though we waited a few seconds, they both produced the exact same timestamp. That's because this function returns a timestamp of when the current transaction began. Now, let's try out the statement timestamp function. So some time has passed since we started the transaction, and that is reflected here. The statement timestamp function provides the timestamp that Postgres began executing the statement. So even if we have an expensive query that references statement timestamp multiple times, we will get the same timestamp each time. And we can see what that looks like with the following query. Wait two seconds. We use the PG sleep function to simulate an expensive query. Though there was a couple of seconds between the two different calls to statement timestamp, they both produce the exact same timestamp. And so this is where clock timestamp comes into the picture. Let's try the same query as above, but with clock timestamp instead. In this example, we can see the difference between the two timestamps because the clock timestamp function gets the actual current time. You now know the difference between the different timestamp functions. So if we are updating or creating a number of different records within a transaction and we want all their timestamps to be coordinated, we should reach for a transaction timestamp, or we can use now as a shorthand. When more specific timestamps are called for, you may want to reach for the statement timestamp. As for a use case for clock timestamp, I haven't come up with one yet, but I would love to hear if you have one in mind. Well, that's it for this episode. Until next time, may your data be consistent and your queries performant.